Fiona was sharp. She had to be. Her world demanded it. So when she met Nick, a man who called himself the Whisperer, she was wary. Nick had something intriguing, a device he called the Silent Listener. It was small, almost inconspicuous, but its potential was vast. It hears what others don't want it to, Nick explained, his voice barely a murmur. Fiona, ever cautious, raised an eyebrow. It collects sound transmissions, the kind that are meant to be hidden. Encrypted conversations, secure lines, whispers in the dark. Intrigued, but still skeptical, Fiona leaned in, ready to dissect both the device and the man presenting it. The silent listener was more than just a surveillance tool. It was a window into a hidden world, a realm where secrets were laid bare and connections were unveiled. Nick demonstrated its capabilities, revealing a spiderweb of connections that spanned continents and crossed boundaries. Names, dates, locations, all meticulously catalogued and linked. Fiona recognized one name instantly. Professor Kimani. He was a renowned scientist, but his recent work had been shrouded in secrecy, raising more questions than answers. The listener linked him to others individuals of significant influence and power. Comrade Malusi, a powerful political figure whose decisions shaped the fate of nations. Pastor Chiamaka, known for her vast network of followers who hung on her every word. And Engineer Tahir, a genius in his field, rumored to be working on groundbreaking technology that could change the world. And then there was the final unnamed individual, designated only as the guide, whose identity remained a mystery. They're converging, Nick stated, his voice low and urgent. All of them at the Seamount Hotel in three days. This convergence couldn't be a coincidence. Fiona felt a chill run down her spine. This wasn't just a random gathering. It was a meeting of minds, a convergence of power. Something significant was about to happen. The air was thick with tension and anticipation. But what? What could bring such diverse and powerful individuals together? The Seamount Hotel was a hive of activity, buzzing with guests and staff. The grand lobby was filled with the hum of conversations, the clinking of glasses, and the occasional laughter echoing through the air. Fiona, blending seamlessly into the crowd, observed everything. She had a knack for noticing the little details that others often missed. She spotted Tad Longway, a junior researcher known for his clumsiness, at the reception. He was fumbling with his belongings, clearly out of his element in the opulent surroundings. He seemed flustered, a keycard clutched in his hand. His eyes darted around nervously, as if he was expecting something to go wrong. As he turned, their eyes met. There was a moment of recognition, a silent understanding that passed between them. Fiona recognized the look of panic on his face. It was a look she had seen many times before in her line of work. He'd been given the wrong key card, one that clearly didn't belong to him. The markings on it were unfamiliar, and he knew he was in trouble. Later that evening, Fiona found Tad in the hotel bar, nursing a drink. He looked lost in thought, the weight of the day's events clearly weighing on him. She discreetly returned the keycard. Their fingers brushed briefly, and she could feel the tension in his grip. He stammered his thanks, relief washing over his features. Thank you, he said, his voice barely above a whisper. Thank you. I, I can't believe this happened. I was so worried. I'm so sorry for the mix-up earlier. The receptionist had apologized. It was a simple mistake, but it had caused so much trouble. Fiona, elegantly dressed and blending into the bustling hotel lobby, made subtle eye contact with a nervous Tad Longway near the reception. She could see the anxiety in his eyes, and she knew she had to help. I don't know what I would have done if you hadn't returned it. I was completely lost. Fiona smiled slightly. She had been in similar situations before, and she knew how important it was to stay calm. You know, Fiona said casually, that card wouldn't have gotten you into any ordinary room. It was meant for something much more significant. Tad's eyes widened. He knew. The card was a key to something important, something he wasn't supposed to have access to. He'd seen the markings on the card. They were unlike anything he had encountered before, and they hinted at secrets he wasn't ready to uncover. He was in over his head, and so it seemed was Fiona. They were both caught in a web of intrigue, and there was no easy way out. Dr. Afolabi was a renowned physician, known for his humanitarian work. 
his contributions to medicine and his dedication to helping those in need had earned him respect and admiration worldwide. He was the last person Fiona expected to encounter at the Seamount, a place she had come to for solace and reflection. Let alone in connection to Nick's network, a web of individuals she barely understood but knew was significant. Yet here he was, his face etched with a seriousness that belied his gentle demeanor. His presence was both comforting and unsettling. You're wondering why I'm here, he stated, his voice barely audible above the soft music playing in the hotel lounge. His eyes held a depth of knowledge that made Fiona's heart race. Fiona simply nodded, her eyes fixed on him, trying to decipher the myriad of emotions she felt. I am the guide, he confessed, his voice a low murmur. The weight of his words hung in the air, heavy with implication. He spoke of two opposing plans. Way Omega, a path towards global unity and peace. A vision of a world where cooperation and understanding reign supreme, and Path Alpha, a descent into chaos and control, a future where fear and dominance dictated the lives of many. The individuals identified by the silent listener were all key players, each with a crucial role in determining the outcome of these plans, each with their own motivations and allegiances, their choices shaping the fate of the world in ways they could scarcely imagine. Fiona left the encounter with Dr. Afalabi feeling a weight settle on her shoulders. The stakes were higher than she could have imagined. The fate of the world, it seemed, hung in the balance. She needed to contact Nick to share what she had learned. But as she reached for her phone, she hesitated. Could she trust him? Could she trust anyone in this web of secrets and conspiracies? Section 6. Way Omega and Path Alpha Way Omega, as Dr. Afalabi had explained it, was a radical concept. It involved a complete restructuring of global power, a dismantling of existing hierarchies, and a shift towards collective decision-making. It was utopian, idealistic, and fraught with potential pitfalls. Path Alpha, on the other hand, was a more insidious plan. It involved manipulating global events, sowing discord and distrust, and ultimately seizing control through chaos. It was a path favored by those who craved power, those who believed they knew best for humanity. Section 7. Fiona's Dilemma Fiona found herself caught in the middle of this ideological tug-of-war. She believed in peace, in collaboration, in the inherent good of humanity. But she was also a realist. She knew that power, once tasted, was rarely relinquished willingly. Could Way Omega truly be achieved? Or was it merely a naive dream destined to crumble against the harsh realities of the world? And if Path Alpha was the more likely outcome, what role should she play? Section 8. The Stakes Rise Fiona knew she couldn't stand on the sidelines. The stakes were too high, the potential consequences too dire. She had to choose a side, to fight for what she believed in, even if it meant putting herself in danger. But who could she trust? Nick, with his whispers and shadows, Dr. Afalabi, with his double life and cryptic warnings, or did she need to forge her own path, relying on her instincts and her wits? Section 9. A Gathering Storm As the day of the meeting at the Seamount Hotel drew closer, Fiona felt a sense of foreboding. Something was brewing, a storm gathering on the horizon. She could sense it in the heightened security at the hotel, in the furtive glances of the guests, in the hushed whispers that seemed to follow her every move. The players were in position, the pieces set in motion. The fate of the world hung in the balance. And Fiona, armed with the knowledge gleaned from the silent listener and the guide's revelations, found herself at the 